China's new missile is locked on to the U.S. and could carry a nuclear warhead as U.S.-China trade talks resume. This is China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest China news and click the notification bell so you get an alert when we publish a new episode. The People's Liberation Army has just test-fired a powerful new missile that can hit the U.S. territory of Guam. That's still a big deal. The missiles can fly 3,400 miles and carry nuclear or conventional warheads. Not that the Chinese Communist Party would ever actually attack Guam, mostly because it would be a tragedy to destroy the last place on Earth where everyone still loves Kmart. But also because the Communist Party's military development is only for peaceful purposes, to defend its sacred territorial integrity. It's just a coincidence the missile, the DF-26, has also been dubbed Guam Killer. It's also a coincidence that Chinese state-run media released footage of the missile tests shortly after the United States has been sending in warships through the South China Sea. That's part of freedom of navigation exercises that challenge the Chinese regime's perfectly reasonable territorial claims in the area, those territorial claims being all of the area. And at the start of the year, the PLA put the new DF-26 in position that could theoretically sink U.S. warships in those waters. But CNN had the audacity to question whether or not those missiles could actually hit anything. Now, this missile's never actually been used in combat, so we don't know its true capabilities. Well, China may have built a missile, but it's CNN that's throwing bombs. So the Chinese state-run media apparatus got underway to prove that CNN is just fake news. CCTV released this epic, stylish propaganda video showing that the DF-26 Guam killer totally works. And my Shazam is telling me that music is from the first Transformers movie. Now sure, the video doesn't actually show whether the missile can hit a moving target, or really if it can hit anything. Really, for all we know, this is a standard ballistic missile launch. But I mean, when would Chinese state-run media ever lie to us? The Global Times even made a point of calling out CNN's fake news, and tweeted the video at them. CNN is going to need ice for that burn. Trade talks between the U.S. and China have resumed. The two countries are in the middle of a 90-day reprieve in the trade war, where there's a shot at working things out. If no agreement is made, on March 2nd, the Trump administration will hit China with an additional 25% tariff on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. So, how are the talks going? According to CNBC, people familiar with the talks and trade experts watching them say that so far, there has been little indication that Chinese officials are willing to address core U.S. demands to protect American intellectual property rights and end policies that Washington says force U.S. companies to transfer technology to Chinese firms. But according to the Wall Street Journal, Chinese officials said they have already taken concrete steps towards reform, citing more liberal rules for foreign competitors in sectors such as autos and financial services and tougher enforcement of intellectual property although Chinese leaders have made promises of reform before. And on a recent podcast of China Unscripted, we talked about how hard reform really is. The way the Chinese Communist Party run things, even private companies, have to follow its political objectives. So it's next to impossible for the Communist Party to actually reform or deal with most of the issues the U.S. is concerned about without giving up a lot of its own power. To drive home that point, FBI Director Christopher Wray at a U.S. Senate committee hearing on Tuesday said the lines between the Chinese government and ostensibly private companies are blurred if not totally erased, and especially the lines between lawful behavior and fair competition and lying and hacking and cheating and stealing. Basically, we're trying to play basketball, and the Chinese regime is playing no-rules jungle ball. Speaking of private Chinese companies that have to follow political objectives, Huawei. China's biggest telecom company. In December, Canadian authorities arrested Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou. She faces extradition to the U.S. for allegedly violating U.S. sanctions on Iran. Well, on Monday, the U.S. announced 23 criminal charges against Meng and Huawei. Meng was personally charged with bank fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracies to commit bank and wire fraud. Plus, Huawei itself was charged with technology theft, bank fraud, obstruction of justice, and money laundering. And right before the trade talks, Meng made her first public appearance in more than a month in a Canadian court. 
Canada now has a month to decide whether the U.S.'s formal extradition request is strong enough. During Tuesday's hearing, the judge delayed the next hearing by a month to March 6th. I mean, why deal with something now when you can just put it off till later? But for a brief moment, it looked like Canada may have been caving to the Chinese regime on the Huawei case. At least, that was the impression given by Canadian ambassador to China, John McCollum. As I said, I think Ms. Meng has quite a strong case. McCallum then laid out in some detail why he believed a Canadian judge would reject a U.S. request to extradite Meng. And as Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister Christia Freeland said, that's a problem. Ambassador McCallum's comments were inconsistent with the position of the government of Canada. The first and foremost job of any ambassador of our country is to express accurately our government's position. McCallum later apologized and told the Canadian newspaper The Star that he misspoke. But then, right after, he opened up his mouth again and promptly inserted his foot. McCallum told a reporter that it would be great for Canada if the U.S. dropped the extradition request, once again suggesting that it would not, in fact, be the rule of law that would decide the issue, but some political horse trading. And then Prime Minister Justin Trudeau told Ambassador McCallum, you fired. I think Trudeau just wanted to impress Donald Trump. Anyway, former Canadian ambassador to China, David Mulroney, said McCallum's comments were mind-boggling. But this is what the Chinese Communist Party is good at, elite capture. That means getting influential foreigners to support the Chinese regime's approach to issues and then push those agendas in their countries. In fact, former ambassador to China David Mulroney knows a lot about elite capture. In an email to the star, Mulroney wrote, China is amazingly successful at convincing people, including seasoned diplomats, that the most important thing in the world is maintaining good relations with China. By this, they generally mean not commenting or otherwise reacting to something egregious that China has done. They, the Chinese regime, persuade people by playing to their vanity, making them believe their unique understanding of China is evidenced by their ability to keep things calm and untroubled. They do this because it works for China. That's ridiculous. I mean, I have a unique understanding of China. I'm also vain. Why hasn't the Chinese regime tried to elite capture me? In McCallum's case, he apparently received more than 73,000 Canadian dollars worth of trips to China when he was a member of parliament. I guess that was a good investment. Of course, my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, had its own unique take on the matter. The real political interference was McCallum getting fired for saying there should be political interference in Meng's case. Ottawa is now as sensitive as a frightened bird. A frightened bird? Doesn't the Global Times know he's a shiny pony? Justin Trudeau! He's wearing liberal red, of course. I call him the shiny pony. He looks like he's in some sort of zen yoga trance. And it's not just the Global Times spewing hot air. According to a new study, China has not actually honored its commitment to cut methane emissions. The Communist Party not honoring its commitments? I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. In fact, not only were the reductions not made, but Chinese methane emissions actually increased by 1.2 million tons per year during the five-year period. So I guess we now know the answer to this question. If you've been watching the show, you know my two great loves are anime and communism. Well, now, Chinese authorities have finally combined my two great loves into one single monstrosity, a Chinese anime TV series about the life and times of Karl Marx. So young and handsome, I would gladly redistribute all my capital for a chance to see that. And before we go, now is the time when I answer questions from you, my loyal 50 Cent Army, fans of the show who support what we do through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Charlie Matsubara asks, Assuming CCP has learned its data fudging lesson from the Great Leap Forward, what negative consequences might there be for fudging GDP numbers? Does China's tax revenue numbers give a better idea of its real economic growth? 
Great question, Charlie. China recently released its official GDP growth figures for the last quarter of 2018. It was 6.4 percent, the lowest in 28 years. But as even Chinese Premier Li Keqiang once admitted, Chinese GDP figures are man-made and therefore unreliable. So the GDP numbers are made up. But you probably can't get better insight from China's tax revenues either, because those numbers are not made available to the public or to reporters. What a surprise. So maybe China's economy is doing OK. Or maybe it's on the verge of absolute collapse and it's going to take down the global economy with it. No one knows. I mean, we can kind of guess, but no one really knows. But this is how the Communist Party functions. It would rather cover up problems now to make it through the day, and what happens in the future is a problem for the future. And that means they really know how to live in the present. It's a beautiful thing. Thanks for your question, Charlie. China Uncensored relies on your Patreon support, because a lot of advertisers don't dare to work with a show that criticizes the Chinese Communist Party. So head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn how you can help keep China uncensored. And as a way of saying thanks, I'll answer your questions on the show, live. Well, taped live, it's almost as good. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.